Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our session this morning. It's entitled Data, Walk, Ride, and Drive This Way. And uh, our first uh, presentation uh, is Keeping Track of Railroads in North Carolina. And we have uh, Katie Kaiser, who's a graduate of NC State and serving as a support GIS support specialist at the NCDOT Rail Division. And then we have Larry Sanders, who's a graduate of NC State in Civil Engineering spent much of his time at NCDOT, and he now continues to work with the Rail Division while pursuing his master's in GIS technology at NC State. So, Larry, you want to take it on? Pleasure to be here this morning with you guys. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, share, I don't, I don't have a, a real technical presentation for what we're doing with uh, GIS and, and Rail Division. Although we are doing some technical stuff with GIS, that's not the point of our presentation today. We were asked um, by various people to give a presentation on what it is that the real division possesses in GIS. And so that's what we're presenting today, uh, just to give you guys uh, an idea of what we have and, uh, and how we're keeping track of railroads in North Carolina. <clears throat> um, we produce uh, several layers that are available for public download. On um, One layer is on the tracks, another layer is on crossings, and a third layer is on facilities. One that we do in-house uh, is we keep track of VAL maps. And uh, for those of you who don't know anything about railroads, evaluation maps were done back in the 19, about 100 years ago. And <clears throat> all railroads in the country were required to do it. And uh, there were property uh, maps, surveying maps, uh, survey grade at the time. And uh, they were used <clears throat> for all kinds of purposes then. They're still used as, as documents that the railroads have uh, for all kinds of purposes. And um, a, lot, a lot of times surveyors and uh, other folks will try to get information about that. <clears throat> um, the railroads have all those, all those uh, uh, files. They are publicly available in DC, so anybody that wants to go and work through the archives up there can do so. That's a lot of labor and intensive work. But we, do, we keep track of that as well, of the, of the VAL maps that we have, have uh, available to us right now. Uh, we also do some RTS online, and uh, we're in a project to get some real history done. <clears throat> Concerning the railroad tracks, um, we have um, historically, there have been uh, 97, 98 counties that have had railroad track in them. Railroads were in their heyday back in the 1930s. And uh, <clears throat> I'll show you later on a little bit about that. Uh, but currently, we have uh, railroads are actively uh, operating in 86 of our 100 counties in North Carolina. The railroads uh, are classified by the Federal Railroad Administration according to the revenue. And so in North Carolina, we have two class one railroad operators. That's Norfolk Southern, which is NS, and CSX is the other one. Uh, the class three railroads, also again based on their annual revenue, we have 24 short line railroads operating in the state. And we also offer uh, passenger service. So we have information on, on passenger rail. And uh, North Carolina, we have, there are four tourist trains. Uh, one up in the mountains, um, Two up in the mountains, actually, and then uh, one uh, here in Wake County, and then one in Red Springs. Um, the the red lines for for those of you in the back that can't see it, the red lines uh, show our short lines in the state. Blue is CSX. Uh, green is Norfolk Southern, and purple is a is a joint. Uh, operation by CSX and Norfolk Southern. And this is some of the, the, the data that, that is available in our data sets that are available for uh, public use. I know a lot of you can't see this, but what we have is you know, the attributes that are in our data tables. So we have the railroad operator, um, uh, the type of track that is there, the branch of, uh, that the railroad designates for what they call that, that line. Uh, the mile posts are, are there as well, and then we have some other stuff uh, that's in that real layer. Some example uh, screenshots of 
what our tracks uh, are shown. <clears throat> it's really hard to see from, I, I know from out there, but this is uh, here in Raleigh. Um, this is uh, the rail yard. Um, on the right is uh, some orange lines. That's the uh, uh, CSX tracks that go up north. And on the west side of, in the middle there is Capitol Boulevard. And on the west side is Norfolk Southern Rail Yard. Moving on to the crossings, we have uh, over 12,000 crossings in our da inventory database. And that uh, information is brought in uh, to GIS and we um, uh, update that quarterly. And I would like to give credit to uh, Moffitt Nickel. Uh, we have uh, one of their staff here today. Uh, they did a lot of the initial work uh, on getting this stuff up and running for the rail division. Uh, um, and the, although there's 12,000, over 12,000 crossings in our database, all that we produce and make available to the public is uh, information on the public crossings that are open. So there's, we have information that are on closed crossings that were closed decades ago. Well, that's not really relevant information for a lot of folks, so we don't actually publish that kind of stuff. So currently there are 3,549 crossings as of December 31st. Um, I think there's been a few more added since then. In our, our rail, um, although this looks like lines, these are actually all of our points of where all the crossings are. The railroad inventory started back in 1972 as a federal mandate. So the difference, this is what we have in the crossings. This is what we publish. So just some small distinctions. You can't really see a, a whole lot, but there, there are some. Another example of, of the crossings. There are yellow dots here. The yellow dots represent the crossings that are published. And then the, the, the uh, cross bucks that are symbolized here, they represent all the crossings. So there's, there's, you can see a, a visual difference in what's published and what we have. Uh, the third layer that we have available is the facilities. And the facilities include um, transload uh, locations where a railroad will either put on or put off of their rail cars with an exchange with other... Um, so it could be... Um, Grain could be vehicles that go into it, could be um, oil or gas, that kind of thing. And so those facilities are, are included in this layer. Also in this layer are uh, Amtrak facilities. And um, uh, the, Katie, what's the most recent we added to that? We recently added a, um, a bus stop in Greenville. So if you want to take the train from Wilson, North Carolina, you can take a bus from a lot of places in eastern North Carolina. Recently added was Greenville. So it also offers all the Amtrak bus service. Um, and here's a, a screenshot of, of the VAL maps that we have available. VAL maps, um, as I mentioned earlier, were our survey grade survey grade maps generated back in the between the 1916, 1916 era to the 1930s. They were updated uh, often by the railroads. But I think that that practice has stopped probably back in the 1980s, 1990s. <clears throat> Here's an example of a VAL map that we have available on our end. So if you come and ask us for VAL maps, I'm not sure what, the, what our policy is. I, I would have to talk to the managers within the rail division to see if we are actually allowed to give those out. Um, but we do get them on a, from time to time from the railroads. They are available from the railroads for purchase. Uh, we also produce some of these services in RTS Online. So the same map you saw earlier, um, we, we make it available on, online. The rail system map includes uh, the tracks, the facilities, and the crossings. <clears throat> uh, 
so when we talk about what data is available for, for railroads, um, and is it available for public access? Got a simple outline here of what is available for you guys and for uh, anybody to, to use. <clears throat> um, the crossings that are in the database that we, we publish in the crossings, uh, those are, are available. Um, they're published, they're updated quarterly. The, um, and they are available on NC1 map and uh, NCDOT website. And they're also available on RTS online. Railroad crossings, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, railroad tracks, similarly. Uh, the data there, we just had a major update on our uh, railroad track uh, attributes. And uh, if you guys need and want access to uh, rail data that the state has, um, continually check back on the site and, and, um, and get updated data if you want that. <clears throat> um, it's also available on NC1 map. Uh, and uh, the NCDOT website for download. Railroad facilities, the same thing. Uh, and then the VAL maps, uh, currently they are only available internally to the rail division employees and staff. Um, and how do you get access to it? Uh, it's available for download uh, at the Connect DOT website. Uh, you can also Google NCDOT GIS layers. And just to touch on a little bit of a history, we were, we, uh, Katie was tasked with uh, getting some updated uh, history on railroads in North Carolina. So that's an ongoing project that we have, and it's probably going to take several years to get this project done. Uh, it's, it's in our spare time <laughs> as we are able to get to it. Uh, but railroads started in North Carolina in the 1830s. First started from, uh, it was initially going to be a railroad that went from Wilmington to Raleigh. And uh, politicians got involved and decided that it wouldn't go through Raleigh. Instead, it went to, Wil uh, to Weldon instead. So it became the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad. And now we, re we refer to it in the, in the railroad industry as the W&W. &W. By 1900... <coughs> Um, railroads were becoming more prominent in the state. By, and going back a little bit further, by 1850, North, in North Carolina, 10 railroads were under construction with uh, five more on the drawing boards. The Civil War brought some destruction, and North Carolina rebuilt quickly from that. And by 1870, had another 150 miles of new track. By the end of the century, North Carolina was proud to have over... Uh, 3,800 miles of railroad track laid down. 1930s were the heyday for railroads in this country. <clears throat> um, recently found out uh, that there was a railroad, that, for anybody that's familiar with Wilmington, there was a railroad that went out to uh, Wrightsville Beach. Some track that went out that way. But we have, uh, we're in the process of trying to obtain all the information uh, on historical railroad in the state. And eventually, when we get that stuff where we feel like it's good, we'll probably publish that as well. 2000, move ahead several decades. Uh, we have uh, a number of railroads here. And other uh, NCDOT rail GIS initiatives that we have going on. Not only is the stuff that we've presented so far today, uh, we're also under contract to get uh, a linear referencing system done, again through uh, Moffitt Nickel. Uh, <clears throat> there's, we had a, recently had a joint project with the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration, to uh, provide crossing photos and national GIS uh, efforts. And so that stuff is available through uh, federal uh, agencies. We also produce incident maps and incidents. When I say incidents, that includes both trespassers. That's somebody that's out walking on railroad right-of-way that shouldn't be there. Uh, and that's considered trespassing. It is a uh, class, uh, class one, class three misdemeanor in the state. And the other one, the other type of incident is grade crossing crashes. So anytime a train hits a vehicle or a pedestrian or a bicyclist or a motorcyclist at a crossing, 
that's required to be reported to the Federal Road Administration, so we produce those that information. Uh, there's the recently we had the all of our we kept track of, of the crossings and information on the tracks previously in microstation, so we converted all that over to GIS. We've done some spatial analysis for data correction and, and the potential project funding based on the funding source. We constantly do special projects for the rail division director, um, produce uh, specific maps or information that he needs. Uh, as mentioned already, the, the historical railroad lines, that's in that historical and that associated data, we're working on that. The reconciliation of data, uh, both the geometry and the attributes, that's an ongoing effort. And so we continue in the process of making a quality product for you guys. Story maps, we've done some story maps for various efforts. Uh, new rail facility maps, cross enclosure maps. Uh, anytime that uh, when the railroads get involved in, in a project and we try to spend some money, the railroads and the state we're always interested in closing crossings because that reduces the risk, the risk of liability and the risk of, uh, of accidents that can occur. And when, a, when an accident does occur on, at a grade crossing crash, it creates a ripple effect down the railroad line. And that's always problematic. So it stops their freight trains, it stops Amtrak trains, it stops everything from operating for at least a period of time. And that's revenue for their customers. It's also uh, revenue for them as a company and so it impacts a lot of things in the railroad industry. And uh, so anytime we can close a crossing, it's a good thing. <clears throat> um, Google map projections. We've done some stuff for the rail division director there as well. Uh, marketing for train events and attractions for increasing ridership. Uh, the rail division has, uh, has a, an arm and a leg and, and a lot of things going on uh, to promote uh, transportation in, in the in the state so we're always pr promoting uh, passenger ridership and we also have done some network analysis uh, the strategic planning uh, the STI uh, produce, produce information for the funding mechanism that the NCDOT at, at, at large does to uh, do projects around the state for highway Aviation, it doesn't matter the mode, but we provide information that goes into that formula to get project funding. And uh, inventory data analysis, and that goes back to the, the 12,000 crossing database. That's all I had. Um, can I take any questions? The, the, the question is uh, the availability on the historical railroad information. Uh, currently, we don't make that available to the public because it's just still in the beginning stages, so we don't have a, a, a product to really offer anybody yet. Yeah, Katie, yeah. Katie's our, our yeah, specialist. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, uh, by ATT, you mean uh, like communications? No, American Tobacco, American Tobacco Trail. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have information on the American Tobacco Trail. Uh, that that corridor is actually owned by the state of North Carolina, and so we do have information in our uh, track layer on that as well. That is that is projected. Uh, I want to say yes to that, but I can't promise you that yet. It's, an, it's really unclear at this point. Um, the reason it's a very low priority for us, um, based on other things. The reason it was it started was the director of the rail division needed it for real estate purposes and communicating. Come on up here. And other, so. That's all I have to say about railroads. But. 
Anything else? Yes. Oh, um, the historical railroad layer, I'm really not sure if it's going to be published or not. Right now we're still in the very, very beginning stages of getting it done. There is so much historical rail in North Carolina to cover. Um, that's something that we'll have to decide later on once we get kind of a, a draft version to just evaluate, you know, and see how, how it's done. So. Another yeah. question? Yeah, it would include all of the information that the rail division currently has on hand. So, yes, I can't say it's going to include every spur line, but if the rail division knew that there was a spur line here, we're going to draw it based on old um, CAD data that we have. We're also using bow maps. We're using paper maps. We're kind of drawing in every source that we can to create the most comprehensive data set we can. The, the information regarding a company that might have been served on that rail, on that rail spur, we may or may not get that information. Oh, wow. So that information would be really useful for you guys. It's, it's great to always learn new applications of our data. Anything else? I know, in, I know in, there's a line in Durham that was recently, I think, submitted to the Surface Transportation Board for abandonment, but I, I don't know that for sure, but I think that's the case. Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys.